Greetings Steiners and welcome to another fireside chat here at the Collapse Cafe of the Doomstead Diner. It's time to coffee up with your favorite beans freshly ground by the diner baristas and contemplate the ever more disgusting political landscape we live in as collapse moves through this sector of our society. Over in Euro trash land, the sitting POTUS, Donald Dietry Trumpovetsky, took a lot of heat for canceling an appearance to honor veterans on or close to Veterans Day. Is this a big deal? Uh, it depends on how you look at it. But, in my humble opinion, it was a big deal. First off, it's a major public relations gaffe. If there is one demographic Trumpovetsky does not want to piss off, it is veterans. There are a lot of them many oldsters, and many from the southern states where the Donald did well getting these dumbkoffs to vote for him in 2016. These folks won't vote for him again in 2020 if they perceive they are being snubbed, which they are. El Trumpo has also himself now been snubbed by the heads of state for numerous fascist states of America allies, including such notables as Andrea Merkel, Manny Macron, and Pierre Trudeau. The whole episode turned into a total disaster for Trumpovetsky on the international stage, where he continues to be a magnificent failure. He doesn't do much better locally, of course, but has somehow managed to maintain his base of support amongst the deplorables who voted for him. Besides Trumpy Dumpty's spectacularly bad international performance, and I haven't even touched on the ongoing trade war with the Chinese. Locally, we had a photograph of high school students in Baraboo, Wisconsin, go viral on the net. It's an almost all-white school, and the photo depicts all young white males with their arms raised in the Nazi salute. Well, it becomes ever more evident that the radical right is on the rise in the fascist states of America and overseas, there are trolls on the internet who continue to insist that what we really need to fear is the radical left, Maoists or collectivists, and whatever trigger word they choose to use in a post to inflame the brainwashed capitalists who think this form of economics is so much better. Just about invariably, this crowd consists of the rich upper middle class that inserted themselves somewhere in this system to become rich. They are powerful political force in the fascist states of America, and it is their support and tax dollars that go to supporting the overseas wars and the local police genocide of the poor population of the FS of A, consisting mostly of blacks and Latinos. This group of trolls generally inhabit ideologically right-wing websites like Zero Edge and the Burning Platform, but occasionally they come in to drop their turds on the diner. We've had a few of them come and go over the years. They may be energy industry shills, aging white women who hate all things Jewish or Muslim, or Joel Osteen style faux Christians who pretend to piety, but are in truth hateful individuals who get their jollies by disrupting websites with an opposing point of view to the disgusting dog shit they perpetually purvey with the pros they shit out on their keyboards. Here on the diner, I get rid of this humanor one way or the other. Usually, I can get them to quit by napalming the living shit out of them, but it doesn't always work in the most persistent of offenders, and I have had to do a couple of bannings over the years to exterminate them. I tried not to do that, though, because I always hold out the hope that even the most corrupt of individuals can somehow be saved. Unfortunately, this is not generally true. And if a person has sunk this low into an ideological sewer, there is no saving them, by any means. In any event, they aren't welcome on the diner. And as they turn up, I get rid of them. I like a clean kitchen. Not one infested with cockroaches like TVP and Zero Hedge. This phenomenon is all part of the political polarization we are undergoing globally. It's not just a fascist states of America phenomenon. You see these right-wing nationalist ideologues popping up like mushrooms on a cool damp morning in 
Tennant Square, Pennsylvania, in just about all the wealthy industrialized nations of the West these days. From Geert Wilders in the Netherlands, to Frauke Petri in Germany, to Jair Bolsonaro, the new El Presidente of Brazil. The media is completely controlled by right-wing ideologues like Rupert Murdoch, and yet you have trolls trying to make the case that we have a vast radical left problem here in the fascist states of America. This is so contrary to reality, it's hard to believe people will argue this. But they do, nevertheless. Guess what, folks? There is no left in the fascist states of America. It was eviscerated long ago by the purges in the 1930s and the Army McCarthy hearings of the 1950s. Socialism and communism are vilified in the textbooks the young people are given to learn history from, and most of them grow up thoroughly brainwashed that these systems are worse than capitalism. This is true for many diners, who aren't effusive and disruptive ideologues, and these are the people I try my damnedest to reach, although I often fail at that too. But I don't quit, because in the words of the Illuminati scumbag, Winston Churchill, If you have an important point to make, don't try to be subtle or clever. Use a pile driver. Make the point once, then come back and hit it again, then hit it a third time. A tremendous whack. And that's all the Doom. This time until next time, here on the Doomstead Diner.